Welcome back to another episode of B&W's Ask the Expert. Returning with us, we have John Knappick to talk about electrostatic precipitators on wood-fired boilers. Welcome back, John. It's good to be back. Thank you. What is the role of an ESP in a wood-fired application? Well, first, a precipitator, of course, is a dust collector. Mm -hmm. And so it's collecting in a biomass boiler or a wood-fired boiler, the ash components coming off the boiler. Uh, the application is very easy for a precipitator and so it does quite well. It's easy because the dust or the ash is highly conductive and a precipitator loves highly conductive dust. When the dust is highly conductive then the power levels at which the precipitator operates can go very high. The higher the power levels the higher the collection efficiency so at bottom line it's an easy application for precipitators. It's an application where you have to watch out because I think it has the highest incidence of fires in a precipitator. So one thing they do, they put a mechanical collector ahead of the precipitator. Because there's a mechanical collector, because it's highly conductive dust, it has very few number of fields, two or three fields versus a coal fired boiler, which I have five or six. Mm -hmm. But bottom line, it's a simple application for a precipitator. Great. And what is the most significant improvement you've seen in your career? Uh, power supplies. Uh, precipitators have been around since the early 1900s in commercial applications. And precipitators have used what are called transformer rectifier sets. Okay. A precipitator is a DC device. It uses high voltage, but it doesn't use high voltage AC. It uses high voltage DC. But for years, that high voltage DC was provided by a device where the high voltage had a lot of ripple in it. So if you had an oscilloscope and looked at the waveform, you'd see it going up and down and up and down. And the, uh, it, that waveform is less efficient mm -hmm. as opposed to if you could get pure DC that stays at the same voltage level mm -hmm. as time proceeds. So the biggest innovation has been power supplies, low ripple power supplies, where they've taken the ripple out of the waveform, which has increased the power into the precipitator by at least 25 to 30 percent or more, and more power in means less dust out. Great. And what is one diagnostic check that you recommend on an operating ESP? For me, and I think for most people, mm -hmm precipitators, power dominated device, you need to record and monitor the total power at which the precipitator operates. So say if your precipitator has four or five voltage controls or four or five power supplies, you get each one of those power supplies to report to the precipitator computer the power at which they operate, the computer then sums up all four or five of those and gives you one value, which is the total power at which the precipitator is operating at. You don't need to be an expert. You know more power in, less dust out. So you're just watching that, you know, yeah. how it's doing over time. And you'll, you'll be very good at evaluating, does this one have a problem or, oh, we're, we're running you know, real well. It's fantastic. Thank you for joining us again, John. Well, it was my pleasure. I hope to do it again. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Ask the Expert. This is John Knappick, and uh, we'll see you next time.